Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. If we haven't yet had the pleasure of acquaintance, I am Carrie Krause, and this is my dear friend, Julie Gosswiller. And uh, we are pleased to share this program this evening of composers who would all identify with the LGBTQ plus community. So this composer that we just heard, Schubert, he would identify with the B part of that acronym. Um, he had many very passionate uh, lusts after beautiful ladies, unattainable ladies, um, but the B part of, of his life isn't written about much other than in contemporary scholarship, which has um, uh, determined that that was such a normal part of life. It was such a, a, a given kind of part of, of that culture that he was in. Um, that uh, that was the case for him. And he died when he was only 31, so four years younger than Mozart. And next, Carrie and I are going to play the Francis Poulenc Sonata for violin and piano. And um, Poulenc was a French composer that died in 1983. He was a veteran of World War I. And when World War II came around, he, France was occupied by Nazis at the time, and he traveled around the country performing songs with his singing partner, Pierre Barnach. And um, he also wrote this sonata during World War II. And he dedicated it to a friend, a Spanish poet, Federico Garcia Lorca, Lorca, unfortunately, was executed by firing squad um, by the fascist regime at the beginning of the Spanish Civil War because he did not hide his leftist views or his homosexuality. And Poulenc was devastated by this and furious. And you will hear that in the outer two movements. But the middle movement is an elegy to um, the poet and the poet loved Spanish guitar music, and he played guitar himself. And so you will hear in the second movement that Poulenc uses the guitar tuning system, and he um, has the violinist strum and this, like a guitar. And uh, we hope you enjoy this piece.
Tchaikovsky wrote these next set of pieces um, just after fleeing a disastrous two-month-long marriage and subsequent suicide attempt, a marriage that he entered into to quell the rumors of the public about his identity. Um, and he was so wrecked from this experience that his uh, musical patron invited him to come to her country estate, which is in modern-day Ukraine, to recover from that experience. And so the translation of this Opus 42 is In Memory of a Dear Place. And we played last night in Big Timber. This is one of six performances for us. And um, I was speaking with a, a wonderful pianist there named Tom, who told me a story that I thought I would share with you also, which is that um, when Tchaikovsky was 54, the KGB equivalent um, police of the czar came for him and took him in for questioning. And he had various uh, medical issues by this point. Um, but it was 10 hours of questioning about his relationship with the czar's uh, nephew, um, and far into the middle of the night. And uh, when they finally let him go, he was just completely ashen, and he died the next day.
Well, we have some Samuel Barber for you next, and he is one of my favorite American composers, and um, I know all the musicians know him, but um, his most famous piece is the Adagio for Strings, and I'm sure most of you have heard it. It's been in a lot of films, and um, this piece that we're going to play for you, the canzone, was originally written for a friend of his who plays the flute, played the flute, and um, he later transcribed it for violin and piano, and then it became the middle movement of his second piano concerto, and his partner was John Carlo Minotti, also a very famous composer, and the two of them met at the Curtis Institute of Music, and then they both became professors there later, and uh, between the two of them, they won four Pulitzer Prizes for composition. We hope you enjoy this piece. Thank you. 
So as director of Baroque Music Montana, I have to mention that we have some albums for sale <laughs> out in the lobby. And if you're really cool and maybe you like vinyl, we have those too. So uh, with Baroque Music Montana, we have presented concerts about black composers and women composers and Jewish patrons and Bavarians and Bohemians and Bolognians, Bolognese, people from Bologna. Um, but this uh, set of composers that you're hearing tonight are uh, certainly not an exclusive list of this particular community. In fact, it's actually a brilliant programming idea because there is so much amazing music. And this uh, group of composers um, also includes uh, the Baroque composers uh, Corelli, Handel, Lully, who is the primary composer under Louis XIV, Frederick the Great, and later composers Camille Sasson, John Cage, Leonard Bernstein, Benjamin Britten, Frederick Chopin, and many, many others, uh, and many contemporary composers. Um, so their music is, is incredibly well-crafted and transporting and unique. I feel very, very lucky that it exists. Um, so before we, uh, for our last piece, um, this is a set of 10 variations on a theme, well-known theme by Paganini. And um, Paganini does not make the cut for this program on his own, um, but the person who did the transcription does, Karol Szymanowski. He was a Polish composer and he became known as the father of contemporary Polish music. And uh, his music, um, up to a certain point in his life, was marked by sadness. And then he kind of liberated himself and his identity. And then his, his music became uh, overall joyful. <laughs> 